Hello guys, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA, predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of a medieval Spanish Moor, a uh, Muslim from Spain. This is what he is predicted to look like. He's predicted to have green color eyes. Um, actually, Nashakot predicts him to have hazel eyes, but my Akiat V3 predicts him to have green eyes. Uh, that's why you see I uh, circled the green eyes instead of hazel because Akiat v V2 is a little bit better and more precise when it comes to eye color prediction. He's got blonde hair and with Snipper Freak he's predicted to have green or hazel eyes. Actually, red hair and white skin. Uh, with Ysec he's predicted to have blonde hair, very white skin, very blue eyes. Uh, he had some variants in MC1R, which is why he's predicted to have uh, red hair with Snipper Free, and he's got a little bit of a likelihood for red hair with my Nashakot 2. Uh, he's got a very mysterious genotype because he has two derived variants in BH4 and also two derived variants in BH2. Now, that's impossible without a dislinkage event. That can only occur uh, when there's a dislinkage event. So not only does he have two derived variants in this super rare Mediterranean uh, blue eye mutation, he's also got it while having BH2 as well, which is super crazy. And to add on top of the craziness, he's got one derived, only one derived variant in BH1. How did this happen? This could be explained by a couple things. Um, it could be explained by two independent dislinkage events, one where BH4 was inherited together with BH2 and BH1, and another one where it was inherited together with BH2 but without BH1. But there is also a much simpler explanation, which is that uh, the simpler explanation is that simply there was a genotyping error, something went wrong with the file. Genotyping errors occur pretty frequently, much more frequently than you might think, uh, because it all depends on what kind of uh, chip was used to sequence his DNA. If they use the MyHeritage chip, it's very much possible that this is not even his real genotype. So uh, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, I'm, I'm inclined to think that this was a genotyping error. He's got A2A2 genotype in DRD2's TAC1 variation. Pretty typical genotype for like any modern human. Uh, if you've seen my channel, you've seen gorillas, chimpanzees, various monkeys on my channel. They score A1A1. Uh, Neanderthals also tend to score A1A1. A2A2 means normal odds of ADHD, Parkinson's, tardive dyskinesia, and various other dopamine-related stuff. Uh, he's got heterozygous genotype in Combs Valmet variation, which means intermediate level of dopamine uh, in the brain. Pretty typically European genotype to have does not have derived EDAR, so no East Asian facial traits, uh, no shovel-shaped incisors, monolids, all the other uh, straight hair, all the other stuff. Uh, no lactose persistence mutation, no European lactose persistence mutation. Uh, this mutation is most typical in modern Central and Northern Europeans, and he's not a Central or Northern European, so it's nothing surprising here. Does not have the mutation that protects against myopia, so he might have uh, myopia or nearsightedness where you can't see in the distance. And uh, this is his. This is the reason that he's predicted to have red hair with snipper free, for example, because he's got this genotype in this variation of MC1R. Uh, he's actually homozygous for it, and it's it's a super rare variant to have. So I'm inclined to believe that he'd had uh, red hair instead of blonde hair, as was predicted by Nashakot. When it comes to polygenic traits, he's got a modestly high risk score for Parkinson's disease. Uh, he's got a pretty high risk score for brain aneurysm. Uh, he's got a low risk score for type 2 diabetes. Mm. He's got a average risk score for schizophrenia. He's got an average risk score for bipolar disorder. He's got a below average risk score for type 1 diabetes. And he's got an average risk score for asthma. And uh, finally, he's got a uh, below average risk score for coronary heart disease. This is what he scores with Eurogenes K13. Now, make no mistake, this is a European and certainly not a North African. Uh, no North African is going to score 31% North Atlantic and 9% Baltic. However, by uh, Southwest European standards, he's actually pretty exotic. And he's exotic because he's scoring 18% East Med and 8% Red Sea, on top of some Sub-Saharan African too. Um, He's exotic. He's getting modeled as a mixture of Portuguese plus Moroccan or Spanish plus Egyptian or Spanish plus Moroccan. Um, around a quarter Moroccan and three quarters Spanish. So by Spanish standards, this is definitely a very exotic result. And with, G, uh, with G25, we see more of the same. Pretty much a mixture of Spanish and some kind of North African. And also you see Greek Laconia here. So there's some kind of East Mediterranean um, presence here as well. 
this is what he scores with MDL PK16. He's scoring 10.7% North African, 1% Sub-Saharan, and 5% uh, Near East. Because of that, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Spanish plus Tunisian, or Spanish plus Moroccan, or Spanish plus Saudi. So basically a mixture of Spanish plus some kind of Middle Eastern North African. This is what he's scoring with Pan DNA LK10. And I think I'd be correct in my assumption that all the Caucasus hunter-gatherer that he's scoring, he's scoring because of Indo-European admixture. I think that's the only source of uh, Caucasus ancestry in this kind of region, it's the Indo-Europeans. And he's getting modeled here as a mixture of Spanish Northeast plus Egyptian or Spanish Southwest plus Jordanian. So once again, a mixture of Spanish plus some kind of Middle Eastern person. This is what he's scoring with Pan DNA LK12. And something you might overlook is that he's actually pretty Indo-European. He's got 25% European hunter-gatherer and 14% Caucasus hunter-gatherer. Indo-European components, he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of European farmers plus Indo-Europeans. Uh, which is kind of not, not the same uh, proportions as what's typical for uh, Northern Europeans. Of course, Northern Europeans are going to have more Indo-European ancestry, but he's still got this mixture. He can still be modeled as this mixture. Uh, with Ancient Eurasia K6, this is what he's scoring. Um, more sub more um, Natufian than anything else. 45% Natufian, but also 35% West European hunter-gatherers. So he's not entirely a Southern individual. You can still tell it's a European person. But, you know, by European standards, he is kind of exotic, kind of shifted towards the Middle East a little bit. And uh, this is what he scores with Gidrosia K3. He's scoring 7.5% Sub-Saharan African. And I'm going to go ahead and say that this is all legit. All of this is legitimate Sub-Saharan African admixture. He actually is part Sub-Saharan African in a modern sense. This is not just because of some affinities of European farmers and Natufians. No, this is a modern person. He's He's got recent Sub-Saharan African admixture, basically. Now... Uh, thanks for watching my video until the end. You can download this sample in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my video. Goodbye.